Hi everyone, welcome back. In this, hi everyone, welcome back. In this uh, video, we're going to start dipping our toes into what really helps make computer science into computer science. We're going to start talking about variables, specifically scalar variables, since all we're working with right now are scalars. Now, you'll have seen variables a lot in classes like algebra, pre-calculus, calculus, all that kind of stuff. And really, when you look at a variable in some sort of numerical equation, you know that that variable could stand for really any sort of number. And when you do algebra or calculus or whatever you want on equations with variables in them, you know that those equations are guaranteed to work no matter what the actual value of those variables actually are. And in computer science, we actually do something similar to that. So we actually define variables that don't necessarily have a value yet. And then we start doing operations with those variables. And then later on, we'll pass variables through as sort of in a sort of like a uh, input to a function call kind of way. And through that, we will then give those variables meaning through some sort of value. And then we can get an actual output to our function. But that's a little bit in the future. Right now we're just going to start working, playing with variables a little bit and see kind of where that takes us. So in order to define a variable in MATLAB, what you can do is you can type out the variable name. I'll just start with x. You type the equal sign and then you type out whatever you want x to be equal to. So in this case I will start with 17. And we have here that x is now equal 17. That's the output of typing x equals 17. And in the workspace, we can see that the value x has is equal to 17. But we don't have to just stop there. We can really assign x the value of anything that evaluates to some sort of scalar. So we can say x equals 27 divided by 3 plus 9 squared. In this case, x will then be equal to 90. Note that I redefined what x is. So originally x was equal to 17, and then I redefined x. So now x has the value 90. And you can see that over here, x no longer is 17. Instead, x has become 90. Now, a cool thing you can do is you can actually set a variable in terms of x. So we can say that y equals x divided by 9. Since x has the value 90, then basically y ends up becoming the value of x, which is 90. So y is 90 divided by 9, which is 10, just like that. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually set a variable in terms of itself. So you can say y equals 3 times y plus 4. So what MATLAB does is it reads this, and it basically reads this expression left to right. It says, OK, well, first I see y equals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate everything after the equal sign. And as soon as I get some scalar value, I will put that value into y. So now it says, OK, well, let's look at 3 times y plus 4. Well, ped mass, I got to I got to look at 3 times y first. I'll say, OK, well, I have 3 times y. I got to substitute in the value for y. So this becomes 3 times 10. And then it evaluates to 30. 30 plus 4 is 34. So finally, MATLAB says, OK, well, now I have y equals something that equals 34, so I will put 34 into y. And just like that, we have 34 in y, just like, just like we predicted it would be. Here's the thing, though. Whenever you're trying to use variables in any way, you always have to use variables that have been previously defined. So it's totally okay for me to say, hey, what is it? What is x squared minus 9? And it will give us the answer of x squared minus 9. But if I try to say, OK, well, now what is z divided by 3? Now, that's a problem. See, I want to I wanna go back to the point that I made before, that computers are dumb. So what you're saying is you're telling the computer, hey, tell me what z divided by 3 is. And the computer says, well, you haven't told me what z is, so I can't do anything. And then it stomps its feet and refuses to do anything. So then you have to say, OK, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I'm sorry I piss you off. Let's say z is equal to 1. Now will you tell me what z divided by 3 is? And the machine says, thank you, I will. Uh, again, I set this into scientific notation in the last video, so that's why uh, you see the scientific notation answer. So 
Remember that when you're using variables, you always have to set a variable's initial value before you use it. And then after you use it, you're pretty free to do whatever you want with that variable. You can treat it just like any scalar number because really a scalar, because really a variable is just naming a scalar value. Now we don't actually have to limit ourselves to just X, Y, and Z, you know, single letter variable names. I can actually name it almost whatever I want. Uh, we'll get to what that almost means in a sec. But I could say something like blah equals x times y minus c. So then blah is a variable name. So what I've done is I've cleared the screen, but you still see all of my variables over in the workspace. So I still have everything. So I still have everything, basically. Now, something that's really useful, if you're assigning a bunch of variables at once. So let's say you want to do a equals 1, b equals 2, c equals 3, d equals 4, something like that. All, what we have is a bunch of outputs like this, and it kind of clogs up the uh, it kind of clogs up the command window. So this is when it's useful for to use semicolons to hide the output of a result. In this case, if I say, well, okay, a equals 5, it's obvious what the result is going to be. It's going to be a equals 5. So we can just say, we can just start using semicolons to just make things a little bit prettier. Like so. All of a sudden, we have updated what A, B, C, and D are, but we haven't clogged up our command window with a bunch of useless stuff that we already know, which is super nice. So when we're working with variables, it's somewhat lenient with what we're allowed to call our variables. As you can see on the workspace area, I've named a whole bunch of different variables, except for ants. That one was actually named by MATLAB, and we'll get into what ants is in a little bit. But it's, it's pretty... It's pretty loose with what it names your variables, but it doesn't let you just name them everything. So here are the basic rules for naming variables. The variables must start with a letter. So that's actually something that helps MATLAB run a little bit faster. If it sees some term that starts with a number like this, then it can assume, okay, well, this is a number. And then if you say 2a or something like that, MATLAB's going to get mad because it says, hey, this thing started with a number. So I assumed it was a number. But then all of a sudden you put some weird stuff in there. So I feel like you've tricked me and I'm going to get mad and stop my feet and not do anything. Uh, MATLAB, MATLAB is kind of like that sometimes. And that's actually a, uh, that's actually a rule that is kind of common in a lot of computer science languages is that you have to start your variable names with a letter. So another thing about MATLAB variables is that they must be up to 64, 63 characters long. Uh, they can only contain letters, digits, and an underscore. So you can't do anything like test blah equals three or anything like that. Then it um it, it has a hard time with that. Uh, you can't also do anything like dashes because blah test is going to be taken to mean blah minus test. So blah, or I guess blah, blah minus test is going to have a problem. Even if I did blah blah dash test. It's still going to think I'm saying blah minus test. So that's a problem there. And then it cannot contain punctuation characters. So that's kind of an extension of rule three, but you can't do anything like blah comma test. You can't do anything because then it thinks that, okay, well, I want to print, they want me to print out blah first and then test. Can't do blah dot test. Uh, this is a problem for reasons that we will talk about later when we first start, start talking about dot indexing and all kind of stuff. Also, something to note is that you shouldn't use the name of a function or a variable that already exists. So for example, I can't say ants equals three. I mean, I can. I've clearly done it over there. And that's a bad thing because we're overwriting a, a variable that MATLAB uses for its own little nefarious deeds. So we shouldn't be using, we shouldn't be using ants like this. Uh, another problem is if I did say something like square root equals zero, all of a sudden we have lost our square root function. So this is also a really bad thing for us to do. So avoid using existing function names and existing variable names if at all possible. That's a bad thing because all of a sudden you lose value, you lose valuable functions or variables. So if I want to get rid of certain variables, I can type clear and then the variable name. So in this case, I want to clear square root. And now if I do square root of three again, 
now we get square the square root as a function back. So if you accidentally overwrite a important variable or if you actually do too many variables you can type clear and then the function and then the variable name to get rid of that variable you can also just type clear and that gets rid of all variables completely another thing that's really important is that matlab is super case sensitive and this kind of falls into the computer being dumb kind of thing so if i say blah equals three and then i ask it to tell me what blah with the capital b is this is going to be another thing where the computer just kind of stomps its face and it's like well, you told me what lowercase blah means. You didn't tell me what uppercase b blah means. So, you know what? I don't like that you're trying to trick me and try to confuse me and all that kind of stuff. No, this is bad. I'm not going to I'm not going to play your games. Uh maybe I got a little bit over dramatic, but honestly computers are kind of over dramatic. So, you have to be really careful so that you don't hurt their feelings. So, whenever you do a blah with all lowercase letters, you have to do blah with all lowercase letters. Anything else, any sort of uppercase shenanigans in there, that's just going to make MATLAB, MATLAB pretty mad at you. Basically, if any of you are familiar with SpongeBob, you want to treat it sort of like that old man with uh, glass bones and paper skin. One wrong move and everything is just going to go to hell. So page 19 has a whole list of words that you're not allowed to use for variable names. So these include break, case, catch, class def, continue, else else if end for function global if otherwise par for persistent return do another comment here because there's a lot spmd switch try and while none of these are okay to use and we'll get into what all of these mean uh You'll basic, we'll basically use all of these, I believe, before the uh, end of the class. So just all you need to know right now is don't name any variable names this. Otherwise, things may go bad. There are, all, there are also a number of predefined variables in MATLAB that technically you can overwrite, but you really shouldn't overwrite because they have a lot of helpful functionality. So we've talked about ants before. Ants gives the answer to the last evaluated function. There's pi, which is pi. And then we have something called EPS, which is which stands for epsilon. And this is basically the smallest possible difference between two numbers in, in MATLAB. So in this case, it's 2.22 times 10 to the negative 16. Now, in real life, we know that there's an infinite number of numbers between any two numbers that we try to get. So really, there is no smallest possible number between any two numbers. But when we're working with MATLAB, we're actually working on a computer, and a computer is only able to actually work with a finite number of numbers. So at some point, you're going to have a smallest difference between any two consecutive numbers, because if we tried to get any smaller, the computer would start to probably smoke and throw sparks everywhere or something like that. Uh, actually, in reality, what it would do is it would just become a lot less useful because then it'd have to take up a lot more memory thinking about numbers and then all of a sudden you can't like use your web browser very well or something like that. Another thing we have is inf, which is just used for infinity. Another useful one is i, which is just the square root of negative one. And it's represented in its complex form, which is zero plus one times i. And then you also have j, which is just the same thing as i. So i and j both equal the square root of negative one. Finally, we have something called NAN, uppercase N, lowercase a, uppercase N. This stands for not a number. So this is really useful when you try to divide something by zero. So if you do eight divided by zero, uh, surprisingly, surprisingly enough, MATLAB actually does infinity, which I was not aware of before I made this example. So, you know, I look like a fool, but that's okay. We all learn new things every day. So eight divided by zero is actually infinity, but if you do zero divided by zero, which we should all be familiar with from calculus one, you cannot loop it all that limit into submission. That's going to be not a number. So we talked about this before, but we can take any of those predefined variables and set them to whatever we want. So we can do n a n equals one. All of a sudden, not a number is one. We can say that i n f. We can say that i n f equals three. Hey, infinity is now three. 
and so on and so on. Uh, it's not wise to do that. Sometimes we actually do end up doing that, though. For example, we'll redefine I and J a lot just because of some uh, traditions in computer science. Uh, we'll talk about that more when we get to something called for loops, but don't worry about that right now. For the moment, just don't name any of those predefined variables or any of the off-limits words that I mentioned before, just don't name any of your variables that, and MATLAB's going to be totally fine. You, you and MATLAB will be the best of friends if you just respect its predefined variables and special words. All right, so I mentioned this earlier, but there's a few really useful commands for variable management. You could do something like clear, so I can do clear ants, or I can do clear blah n a n. And what clear does is it just gets rid of all of the values of those variables before. So if I do something like x equals 4, you know, I can do x plus 6 and get an answer from that. But if I do clear x, all of a sudden x's value is erased. And if I do x plus 6 again, MATLAB says, oh, hey, you just cleared that var you just cleared that variable. So I have completely wiped it from my memory. I don't know what you mean when I talk about when you talk about x. So you better redefine that. So another useful command is who which lists out all of the variables that have been defined, but it doesn't give their values. And if I instead say whose, this actually gives the variable along with a lot of other information that we haven't really talked about yet. Um, we will get into that a little bit more later, but basically what this size is one by one means is that it's a scalar. Uh, if those of you who are already familiar with matrices, we're just considering scalars a one by one matrix. So Take that how you will. Uh, bytes has to do with the amount of memory in the computer it's taking to store those variables. And then the class being double, it basically means that A, B, and C just, they might have numbers with decimal points in them. Basically, you can think of a double as just, oh, well, this is a scalar. So now what I want to talk about here is just something that will hopefully improve the usability of MATLAB a little bit for you all. So what I have here is a whole bunch of commands that I was running, but then let's say, oh, well, I typed in a equals 29. I meant to type in a equals 28. The problem is if I then change, okay, well, let's say a equals 28. Unfortunately, this, uh, unfortunately, if I want to update the rest of the code in order to make it make sense with uh, a being 28 instead of 29, what I actually have to do is I have to rerun all of these commands because just because I change a equals 28 down there, that doesn't mean that everything else will change. So if I type in what C is right now, it's still going to equal the exact same thing as it, as it was before. So what I would have to do in order to make everything update is I'd have to say B equals 36, C equals A squared plus B squared, C equals S squared T of C, and so on. And finally, I have the updated value of C. And honestly, that's just a pain. It seems to be pretty universally true with computer science majors, and it's that we're kind of lazy. Our whole major is really about saving a lot of work by writing sort of general purpose solutions that can be applied to a large range of values, which is why I'm talking so much about variables and the values that variables get and so on and so on. I'm trying to sort of get those principles embedded in all of your minds. but as computer science majors, if there is a way for us to save time in some sense, then we will put in a lot of work to make saving even just a little bit of time possible. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. I may or may not have spent hours working on scripts just to make a certain key combination change the brightness on my laptop. So uh, just a little bit faster. But we're not going to focus on that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on something called scripts, which will make your life so much easier. What we have right here in the command window is sort of a live version of MATLAB. So it's running commands as we type them in. And a script works a little bit different. What a script actually does is you type in all of your MATLAB commands ahead of time and you save it as sort of a text file. And then what happens is you tell MATLAB, okay, let's open this text file and run it and tell me what the results are when you take that text file and you look through it line by line as if I'm entering each line one at a time into this live MATLAB command window. And then what happens is if you make a mistake somewhere in the code, you can really easily edit it by just opening that text file and editing things there. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So 
in order to actually start working on a script rather than typing in this live window, what you do is you hit this new script button. That gives you something called a blank script. So now this blank window, you'll see that this is called an editor window. And right now it's working on an untitled file. So what I can do is I can start typing a command. So let's say a equals 28, b equals 36. And when I press enter, nothing happens. And that's totally fine because we don't want anything to happen yet. And what I want to note is that when you actually open up a new script, what we have down here is the command window. So you can actually test out your commands like, oh, let's say I want to check to make sure, oh, is it SQRT that takes the square root? Yes, it's SQRT that takes the square root. But then up here, you're actually working on a script so that any work that you do here isn't going to get run yet. So the command window is a good place to check to make sure, okay, well, is my work actually going to work? And then you can start writing it down in the script to make sure everything is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, okay, let's let, let's set C equal to A squared plus B squared. And then we'll say C equals SQRT of C. And this is all great and all. We have our entire script, but now we need to make sure that the script actually works. So what we will do is we will go up here to this run button. And when we click it, it's going to ask us to save. So I will do that in a hot sec. So after I've saved it, I'll try to run it again. And here we can see the answer of all of that. So right here, it says blah. We can actually run this as much as we want by typing in blah. In this case, blah is not a variable as we can see over here. Blah is actually the name of the script. So I can type in blah to call the script and it outputs C equals 4.56. Now let's say, oh, well, I didn't want A to be 28. I wanted A to be 27 and I wanted B to be 45. Now we can run the script again, blah. And look, C has updated based on our changes to A and B. So that's where a script is really useful. And another place where a script is useful is if you want grades in the class, because how you're going to be turning in your work is you're going to be writing a script and submitting it on Canvas so then I can actually pull down your script, run the code, and make sure everything works just fine. I'll add one more thing to the script just so we can just just cause. So I'll type in who at the very end of the script. This is actually something that you'll be doing at the at, in some of your labs is typing who so I can see what variables are being used. And something I might also do is I can clear A and B. And what we should get is the variables, the only variables we have are answer and C, which is perfect. So we printed out C and we printed a list of all variables. If we don't even want answer in there, we can clear ants as well. And once we run blah again, it prints out what C is and it gives us our, that our variables are C. And then just because I can, I'm going to unhide the outputs for A and B just to show that a script, running a script will still print all output just like we would expect it to if we ran it in the command line. So something that you might come across if you're saving a file for the first time and you try to run it is that MATLAB might throw an error that says something about, oh, well, this fold this file is outside of the current folder. Uh, for my MATLAB, the current folder defaults to system32, which is not a fun place for the current folder to be. And I put this, I put this file in my documents folder, like here. So... MATLAB is saying, okay, well, you saved this file in your documents in this whole file structure there, but the current folder, our, the current working directory that we're working in is system32. Do you want to change it? And in that case, if, if MATLAB gets mad at you about that, because MATLAB, you know, it gets mad at you about a lot of things. If, if, if we've learned anything in the last few videos, MATLAB just likes to get mad at you for not following its strict rules. But if you basically, if you see some kind of error if, or it's yelling about uh, you're not working in the current folder, just hit change folder and everything should be good to go. And if you if you want an example of what that error looks like, you can access page 23 in the textbook and they'll give you the tools you need to navigate through that. All right, so I will leave you to look through sections 1.9 and 1.10 through the textbook by yourselves. Uh, it would be useful to work through some of those examples, and we might take a few of those examples to look through in class on Thursday the 9th. So in the meantime, I would, 
I, what I want you to do is play with some of those examples from sections 1.9 and 1.10, really familiarize yourself with MATLAB. Like I said in the introduction video, you should be spending at least a little bit of time practicing code every day. It's sort of like learning a language or, or really learning any new skill where you want to practice at least a little bit every day. Even if you're only spending maybe 15 minutes a day practicing MATLAB code, at least write some code every day. And that's really going to be the key to helping you remember all the MATLAB stuff we're, we're doing, because honestly, this whole quarter is just going to be throwing a whole bunch of code at a wall and hoping enough of it sticks that you can pass the class. So definitely, in order to uh, improve, I guess, the stickiness of that wall, I don't like this metaphor anymore, but really just in order to increase your chances of remembering enough MATLAB to get a good grade in the class, please practice every day. And definitely, I will help with that practice by in class, we'll, we'll go over some problems together just to make sure everyone's on the same page. All right, well, have a wonderful rest of whatever day it is, and I will see you in class.